Hello, I'm Dr. Victor Fox, Assistant Professor of Pediatrics at Harvard Medical School and Director of Endoscopy at Children's Hospital Boston. I'm also the director of a new Center for Pediatric Polyposis at the Children's Hospital. I've been asked by the editors of the journal Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology to present this video ab abstract summarizing our study, which will be published in the September 2010 issue. The title of the study is Juvenile Polyps, Recurrence in Patients with Multiple and Solitary Polyps. My co-authors are my research assistant, Mr. Stephen Peros, Dr. Hongyu Jiang, a biostatistician in the Clinical Research Program at Children's Hospital, and Dr. Jeffrey Goldsmith, a gastrointestinal pathologist at Children's Hospital and Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Gastrointestinal polyps and their role in the evolution of colorectal cancer is a well-recognized and highly publicized problem in adult medicine. Less well-recognized is the frequency with which gastrointestinal polyps are found in children. In fact, polyps in children are one of the most common causes of rectal bleeding and a frequent cause for referral to a pediatric gastroenterologist. We chose to study the juvenile type polyp for several reasons. Juvenile polyps are the most common type of polyp or subtype of polyp found in childhood. Secondly, although juvenile polyps are rarely encountered in adults, adult patients with multiple juvenile polyps, also known as juvenile polyposis syndrome, are associated with a significantly increased risk for developing colorectal cancer. And finally, the natural history of juvenile polyps in childhood and its relationship to the evolution of polyps in adult patients is unknown. The primary aim of our study was to identify a large cohort of children with juvenile polyps and uh, provide a more detailed characterization of this group. We were particularly interested in looking at rates of recurrence of polyp formation in these patients. We performed a retrospective cohort study. We identified patients by searching the Children's Hospital Pathology Database for a nearly 20-year period. We identified uh, 257 children with a median age of 5.6 years and a slight male predominance. A subgroup of these patients were then subjected to more detailed analysis. Of this group, 40% of these patients had multiple polyps, and nearly one-third of these patients had sufficient polyp number to meet the clinical criteria for juvenile polyposis syndrome. Of patients returning for recurrent colonoscopy, we found a recurrence rate of 60% in patients initially presenting with multiple polyps and a recurrence rate of 17% in patients initially presenting with a solitary polyp. We also found a rate of nearly 4% of neoplastic change in this group of patients. Finally, we looked at the association of germline DNA mutations in three separate genes, SMAD4, BMPR1A, and P10. We found that nearly 40% of patients with multiple polyps who were tested had an identifiable alteration in one of these genes. In summary, we've made several new observations in children with juvenile polyps. First of all, we've identified a measurable rate of recurrence in children with multiple juvenile polyps, and as well in children presenting initially with a solitary polyp. We also found a right-sided colonic uh, predominance in the presentation of neoplasia in a small group of patients with multiple polyps. And we found frequent association of germline DNA mutations in children with multiple juvenile polyps. We would recommend the development of standardized protocols for surveillance colonoscopy and for genetic testing in children with juvenile polyps. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you will enjoy reading this article.